Good evening. Uh, welcome to tonight's study meeting. We will start the meeting with the offering of the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Morgan. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Good evening. Welcome to the October 17th study session of the Livonia City Council. This meeting will set the agenda for the 1,956th regular meeting of the Livonia City Council, which will take place on Wednesday, November 2nd of 2022. Uh, at this time, I will note that we do not have any special presentations. Uh, and we will start with audience communication. The council sets aside 30 minutes pursuant to our, our, our meeting rules uh, for any audience communication. Each member of the audience has an opportunity to address us for up to three minutes on any topic that is not on the agenda this evening. Does anybody have audience communication? Good evening, please tell me your name and address. Lori Shook, and I live in Livonia. Thank you. Um, I have talked to Susan Nash uh, personally about this, and I decided this would be a good time to talk to everybody about it. I had the opportunity to work the polls in the primary, and it was an amazing experience, and I got my letter for my assignment for November. Um, I was very impressed at just how all the checks and balances that are done all along the way when you're going in to vote. Um, so with all the people that are you know, concerned and talking about election fraud and all the stuff that's going on, I would encourage those people to work the polls and see exactly what goes on because it was amazing. It was an amazing experience and I, and I wish everybody could have that experience. Um, because right now we've got, we've got a lot of election deniers that are running for some really important offices in our state. And, um, and I don't think we can continue to, or not continue, hopefully we can not elect election deniers that do not believe in the peaceful transfer of power. Because um, that's an important part of our democracy. So, Again, it was amazing. I had a great experience, and I, I would suggest whoever can do it, do it, and you would not be complaining about all this crazy fraud stuff that didn't exist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Daryl Smith, and I live at 14006 Brookfield. Happy to be here tonight, and uh, I see the boss over there. I'll be working for her on election day. I'll be counting absentee ballots, as I've done the last few elections. And uh, I did that kind of like, uh, as Judy was saying, uh, to know the system. There was too many people that were saying, well, this and well, that. And I said, well, I suppose I should work it so that I'll know what goes on. Now, with the exception of the ballots that had some bamboo shreds in there, other than that, uh, the only way you can get a ballot is if it comes from the city clerk. Now, you could steal it out of somebody's mailbox if you want to try to do that, but uh, uh, there, I'm absolutely convinced that there cannot be any widespread fraud in Michigan elections. And yet, Michigan is one of the states that they said, well, yeah, we got problems there in Michigan. No, we don't have problems here in Michigan. It's a good system. You know, I'm impressed by the fact that you can't work the, you can't, uh, work the county board unless you declare your, your loyalty. Are you a Democrat or Republican? You can't say neither because if we're uh, transferring a ballot from someone in the service, they mail it in, they printed it off, it won't read through our readers. So what we have to do is take their vote and sit down at, you're probably a big surprise, but I'm a Democrat. So I'm going to be sitting with a Republican who's going to read off the ballot and mark it. So we're going to be watching each other to see to it that we do that correctly, that it's done true to form, and that neither party is looking the other way to let this happen. We want to keep each other honest. So it's a great system. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again. But uh, 
I think I'm going to start using some uh, song lyrics because I like music, you know. So there's a song by Simon and Garfunkel that says, one of the lyrics says, so a man hears what he wants to hear and disregards the rest. It's the box. And, you know, it, there's a week goes by that I don't think about that. And it's kind of like, well, I've done it myself. You know, sometimes there's something on Facebook that I pass on because it jives with my worldview, you know. And now, if it was against my worldview, I might do a little bit more research into it before I either chose not to pass it on or not. So the whole issue is uh, music is good for us all. So I'm going to start using some lyrics um, to, to kind of promote unity and love and all those good things. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here tonight. And, uh, and I do appreciate the job that uh, Ms. Nash does. She does a great job. And uh, I'm looking forward to counting ballots again. That's all. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Your name and address, please. Yes, I'm uh, Bob Zuner. I'm from Livonia. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone on the council and city for the wonderful job you do. And we may have one building that has a leaky roof, but there's a lot of good things in Livonia. And I'd like to touch on a few things uh, here. First of all, in support of Proposition 3, I'm definitely heavy on no. And the reason I'm no on that is they're stripping away our rights as parents. We have to get back to the family. They're using wording that would, un would make it unable for a parent to be involved. Gives very young minors to go in without any parental advice and make these big decisions. Could be medical malpractice. I heard earlier about it's just a few things in the womb. Well, to me, it's not. It's life. And to most of the voters out there, hopefully you stand up. This reproductive freedom is no freedom. It's taking away our rights. As you heard from the previous person, the world view, right? No, it's America first, family first, and we the people. And other areas of Prop 3 that we need to focus on are fetal viability, means the point of pregnancy. And they're saying, well, there's no life. It can be all the way up to, oh, it, they can't kill that baby all the way up to the end. Well, that partial birth abortion, they can rip the brain out before it's delivered and call that. So there's a lot of things in this. I think we can go back to the table, just like on a couple other things we've had comments about here. And most of the Livonia people vote no on this. It's very radical. They need to take it back out. The only thing Roe versus Way when it was overturned, it moved it from the Constitution to the states. So let's spend some time, but make sure everybody gets out there and votes no on this. And uh, w one other area I'd like to talk on is the election, Livonia elections. I also worked the elections. They were very good. But also, we need a lot more conservative people, Republicans working at these polls, for example, when they closed down the center at TCF Center. And by the way, I did a lot of door-to-door -door canvassing and got many signed affidavits of things that didn't happen right, and people have them. So if you'd like to look me up, call me on that. I'd like to review it. But the best thing is, like as mentioned by everybody, everybody should volunteer to work. We need lots of work here in Livonia. Everything looked, was great that I saw too, but there, there are other areas in Wayne County where we need support. And most of all, vote no on one, two, and three, and especially on three. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, your name and address, please. Um, Deb Christensen, Livonia. Um, uh, good evening. Um, President Jolly, I just wanted to um, address you and the rest of the council. Um, a couple weeks ago, um, um, Mr. Barr was talking about um, his opinion about Prop 3, and he got a lot of love at the last meeting, but I wanted to make sure that you heard from me somebody that's been a member of this community um, since birth and moved back here to raise my own family here. I have a business here in Livonia. Um, I'm going to vote yes on Prop 3. And I, I'm concerned about the misinformation that's being discussed here at a city council meeting regarding Proposition 3. These are all, this is what we call people having like a, um, nobody has a, um, 
crystal ball to look into the future on what these, what these items mean. Um, and people are doing a lot of forecasting on what, it, what they think it's gonna look like based, based on their own lens uh, of what they wanna believe. There's, there's a lot of room for movement in this proposition, as Mr. Barr pointed out um, previously, but that doesn't mean that babies' brains are gonna be ripped out of their, um, from their bodies. And viability, I mean, there's just, and I'm not prepared to talk about that, but you better believe I will be next time to, to look at this proposition item by item to look and to uh, address the misinformation that's being discussed here at the city council meeting with regard to Proposition 3. So to close, I am somebody in the community and, and it's, um, and I think I represent, I don't know how many people I represent, but I represent some people here um, that, are, is going, that are going to vote yes on Proposition 3. So I just wanted to make sure that um, there might be love for Mr. Barr's um, opinion, but there's also love on the other side. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, your name and address, please. Hello, Michelle Haroon. I live at uh, 20290 Fremont in Livonia. Um, thanks for letting me speak today. I'm also a precinct delegate. Uh, I have been involved, well, I'd like to speak to Proposition 3. I also echo um, one of my other uh, neighbor's sentiments about one, two, and three all being uh, proposals that we should vote no on. Uh, two would eliminate the need for uh, ID, showing ID at voting time, which, uh, you know, it's obvious why that would not be a good thing. Uh, also with proposal three, uh, I do know a little bit more about it than some of the other people that have spoken. There's no age uh, limit or minimum mentioned in that uh, documentation. So that means that a child could have, uh, have an abortion, they could have other kinds of uh, procedures performed without their parents knowing, without their parents uh, consenting if they don't even know. So uh, I would um, definitely echo my neighbor's sentiments on that being not a good thing for, um, for Michigan. And also um, regarding the elections, I did work at the TCF Center at the primaries. Uh, I was on the night shift. I got there around before five and um, myself and another friend, we didn't leave until about nine in the morning. And while, while the process is here in Livonia, yes, they were really good when I voted. But in Detroit, I mean, I would say that um, they were still questionable when it was time to close the precinct books for each of the precincts. Some of the way they were calculating totals, like, oh, these were the number that were okay, and these were the number that weren't okay. Some of that was questionable. And some of you may not know that just recently, there was a bill passed where, oh, you know, we can start opening the absentee ballot envelopes on the 6th and on the 7th. So, um, you know, obviously it's, the vote election day is on the 8th. So, you know, why do they want them, why do they want to start opening them? So, something to think about. And uh, there's a need for poll challengers uh, really greatly on the 6th and the 7th and on the 8th. So um, of, all si of all sides, but especially the conservative side so that it's an even mix. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no additional audience communication, audience communication is closed. Is there anybody on the council who has any announcements at this point? I see none. We will proceed uh, to our agenda this evening. I'll note that we have all seven members of the council here and present tonight. Uh, our study agenda tonight uh, starts with new business item number one, an award of bid for the Livonia Public Library for the air duct cleaning at the Livonia Bennett Civic Center, Civic Center Library from budgeted funds. Ms. Laporte, welcome. Can you give us some information in regards to this? Yes, um, we have never had our ducts cleaned at the Civic Center Library. They are pretty horrendous. Um, there's, you know, we were built in 1988. Um, there's a duct right outside my office window in the atrium ceiling that for a while I was getting a lot of wasps in my office. And when I looked at it, I thought they were like it was full of wasps. I, I, I called DPW and they came over and they said, no, that's just dirt. It's dirt that's moving and <laughs> falling out. 
So I thought, you know, it's really time for us to have this looked at. Um, so we went out to bid, and um, uh, of the all of the six bidders that or five bidders that we had, um, I chose Ducks of Southeast Michigan. It's a Livonia company. It wasn't the lowest bid, but the lowest bid is from Victor, New York. They did not come out and look at our building. Um, the, the other people all came out and we gave them the tour of everything. And um, so I think while it's a little bit more, I, they seemed like they knew what they were doing and looked like they were gonna be very thorough. Plus they had better hours than uh, some of the other businesses. Thank you. Direction from council? Mr. President. Mr. Barr. Uh, she had me at never have had the ducks cleaned. <laughs> As someone who's had my ducks cleaned twice, in a shorter period, is a uh, much shorter period of time than that. Um, I'm fine with offering and approving for this for consent if there's no objection. Mr. Chair. Uh, we have an approving for consent. Ms. Toy. Um, if I may, um, to our chief librarian, um, I, I guess what I'm concerned about is if there was that much dirt in those ducks, whose responsibility is it to look at that as well as you called DPW, why didn't someone take some action? I mean, are you maybe now taking the action? Why, why isn't this stuff checked through the years if it's never been cleaned since 1988? That's a good question. Um, you know, I took action because- Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Because I knew that um, I wanted to get it done and I had money in the budget or I put money in the budget to do it because I know how expensive it is. Right. So I think maybe they just, DPW didn't have the money in the budget and knew they wouldn't, so it just got. Well, you know, we, you know, I don't mean to sound rude, but we, we have a lot of people in those departments, um, not only yours, but in DPW, and I don't want to pick on departments, but certainly, you know, that, that could have been addressed back, how many years is that? I'm not real good at my math, I went to Bentley, so um, <laughs> I think it's 40 years at least. Stevenson, it's 34. Is it 34? <laughs> he went to Stevenson, see they taught better math there. Um, so anywho, I just would hope that we are more conscientious on our city buildings as we look at not only duck cleaning, but other kinds of cleaning. I think one of the residents pointed out about why weren't we on top of some of these other things that were happening in other buildings. So I don't wanna throw big rocks or stones or any of the rest at anyone. I just, I just think we need some procedures here put in place if they're not already there. So thank you for paying attention to that, knowing it wasn't a wasp, it was probably a <laughs> giant piece of dust. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was happy to see that you didn't go with the lowest bid I know oftentimes we try to go with the lowest bid, and that doesn't necessarily always mean that it's gonna be the best bid. And I was looking at these bids and I said, Victor, New York, and I was trying to wrap my brain around it was, maybe that was a typo, uh, but I am happy to see that you went with the Livoni company, which is nice, but I'm happy that that uh, ideology isn't there, that we have to go with the lowest bid. I get, we wanna save as much taxpayer dollars as possible and be very, very fiscally responsible, but uh, sometimes you end up spending more money in the long run if you try to pinch pennies at the very beginning. So just uh, kudos to you. And then in my day job, uh, you know, with, with work, we have uh, ducks cleaned off in different buildings, and I was happy to see that this was being done. I didn't know it was quite that long, but it is important. And I know some people say, yeah, it's not worth it. And a few days ago, we had a ducks, ducks clean at a building of ours, and, uh, you know, it was so dirty and so nasty. So it's great to see that's happening in our library. I love to see the investment in our libraries. We just invested a couple hundred thousand dollars in a roof, at another library, and now we're investing more money here at this library. So thank you for what you do, and I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you get some good uh, fresh scents uh, in there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McCullough. Just a quick, uh, through the <clears throat> through the chair to uh, Tony, just a, did you take this on yourself, or was this? I took this on myself. Okay. That's kind of my only question. I think we, I'm not gonna go into much detail, but having a standardized facility, we have many facilities in the city, and so while I appreciate you taking the step, how many other buildings haven't been uh, cleaned or properly maintained? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. Um, Ms. Laporte, this is honestly sh shocking to hear this. As, as the director of our libraries here in Livonia, I res respect you immensely and I expect you to be 
curating the library collection, managing the employees, the librarians, the programming coming out of the library. The, the dirtiness or the cleanliness of the duct work in the facilities should not be your responsibility. And that's, that's awful. And the right people need to hear this. Um, thank you for your efforts. Uh, and I'm sorry that you have to be here tonight for this. This should be uh, standard practice for a city, for any entity that has buildings such as we do. Thank you. Thank you. you have an approving on consent. Is there any audience communication in regards to this? Mr. President, one last thing, just while we're on the topic, is it appropriate if I were to offer a motion to throw this facility management practices as they relate to our city facilities into mm -hmm. the capital outlay and infrastructure committee for further discussion? I think it would be cleaner if you did that at the regular meeting because okay. we could vote on it at that time. That's fair. Okay. I will. Um, Ms. McIntyre? May I, please? I just I, called on you. Uh, no. Yeah. You're all set. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I, I don't, I'm disappointed that this has to go into committee. Uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about our building plans, about our facilities management, about everything else. And I'm disappointed that we're to a point that the city council has to put in to a committee the issue of keeping buildings in a sanitary condition. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, audience communication, your name and address, sir. <coughs> My name is Daryl Smith, and I live at 14006 Brookfield. Uh, yeah, this, this topic is pretty interesting, and your comments uh, as, a, as a council are pretty interesting as well. A lot of reflection on your homes and on your systems and when you have it clean or what, it, what is clean, what is dirty. Um, but it seems to me that uh, a group such as you uh, should be interested in what uh, what to expect, you know? Like, is, is there any research done on how often ducks ought to be cleaned in commercial or, you know, government buildings? Um, or do we just wait until somebody sees the stuff hanging? You know, one thing I do, if I go in a restaurant and I see that stuff hanging from the vents, I leave, I, I don't eat there, you know? Uh, because it reflects on how clean the rest of the restaurant is. But, uh, you know, we shouldn't be relying on somebody seeing something that appears to be visibly dirty to decide it's time to clean the ducts. Um, so to me, we really ought to have a systems approach on things. You know, there ought to be some minimum expectations around uh, maintenance and uh, not just if some, somebody thinks, wow, that's a long time since we cleaned the ducts, you know. Uh, how, long should, how often should they be cleaned? And should they be cleaned in every building every 18 years or every 13 years, you know, just seems to me like we ought to do better. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a motion for consent from Barr. Thank you, Ms. Laporte. Thank you. Item number two is a request for authorization to purchase one diamond brand diesel core cut walk behind saw from the Department of Public Works from budgeted funds. Mr. Rushlow, good evening. Give us some information, sir. Good evening, thank you. Yes, and if I may, Mr. Chair, uh, before I start this item, I wanted to take uh, just a few seconds to introduce our new superintendent of public works, Ryan Farrells, here behind me. Um, Ryan comes to us, or actually started back in August, comes to us with 15 years of experience um, uh, in public works, started out as a uh, public worker on crew, spent 10 years in the field, worked up to management, has spent five years in management as a supervisor, and also as a superintendent um, in the city of Dearborn nearby. And we're lucky enough to uh, have uh, snatched him up and brought him into Livonia as a part of our team. So excited to have Ryan here. His focus will be on uh, water and sewer facilities. That's where most of his background is. Um, and we're very glad to have him as part of the DPW team. So just wanted to introduce you all to Ryan here this evening. Thank you very much. Uh, and as to item number two? Yes. Um, so this equipment is used primarily in the roads department to make clean cuts in the concrete and to allow for its uh, selective removal and replacement of that concrete slab. This item was publicly bid through BidNet um, and eight bids were received. There was only $486 separating the three lowest bidders, uh, which is a pretty slim margin. After reviewing the bid proposals, uh, the department requests that the award of this bid 
go to the third lowest bidder, Ace Cutting, who's a local supplier out of Novi, Michigan, uh, for a few reasons. Uh, a couple are um, that Ace can perform any of the as-needed repairs locally in their Novi facility. Um, some of the other bidders, uh, primarily one of the, the lowest bidders, is not um, a local company and also does not do that type of work with, with actually repairing and maintaining the equipment. Um, they're merely just a, a middleman supplier. ACE has supplied much of our other construction equipment and having worked with them, we know that they have a full service team that can service this piece of equipment as needed. Um, they can also deliver the equipment to us, must to deliver the equipment to us much faster than the other bidders. Um, in speaking with them, they will have that equipment to us within 30 days. Some of the other bidders, the, the next two lowest bidders, were five to eight months um, till delivery of that piece of equipment. <coughs> so with that, it's our recommendation through the department that council proceed to award um, the bid for the diamond um, brand diesel core walk behind uh, saw to ACE Cutting for the amount of $29,136 from budgeted funds. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Toy. I'll offer an approving resolution. Okay. Any objection to that being on consent? None. Mr. Yep. Mr. Mr. President, I actually have a couple questions for Mr. Rush. Go ahead. Mr. Rushlow, uh, how, uh, how many of these saw cutters does the city of Livonia own? We have one other one currently um, in our uh, disposal. It's about 30 years old, um, actually just over 30 years old. Still works, has some issues. So we're going to keep that one as a backup in case something happens to the new one. It needs to get serviced or whatever so we can still continue to work. Um, but we only have one other walk behind saw like this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Rushlow, thanks for uh, being here tonight. Thanks for your department does. When I was looking at the packet, one of the things I noticed was for ACE cutting equipment and supply, in terms of the warranty and lead time, I don't know if you touched on it or not, it doesn't, it, it says non-stated. Is there a warranty on this compared to some of the other bids that did have warranties? Just out of Yeah, there, there is, and the warranty was required um, as such at a minimum of 12 months or a one-year warranty. Um, since they didn't indicate it, we followed up with a phone call to them. They stated that this would come with a one-year warranty as required. And then the lead time to get this would be 30 days for us to take um, delivery of that equipment. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rushlow. And just a uh, uh, nice beard, by the way. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have an approving uh, with no objection for placement on consent on number two. Do we have any audience communication on number two? I see none. We will move on to item number three, a request to authorize additional <coughs> expenditure from the Department of Public Works for additional scope of work through change order on the fleet maintenance garage electrical system replacement project and to provide payment to Allied Building Service Company in De Clemente Design Inc. from budgeted funds. Noting Council Resolution 221-21, Mr. Rushlow, tell us what this is. Yes, as you recall, uh, previously under Council Resolution 221-21, the award of this construction project was given to Allied uh, Building Service Company to perform the electrical uh, service upgrades at the fleet maintenance garage. Um, through that process, in order to accommodate a proposed new location for the standby generator that you know is used obviously when, when there's a, a power issue, um, a change order was required to move the transfer switch and some of the electrical service uh, equipment and conduits to make that work with the position of the, the new uh, generator. Um, so we proceeded to uh, get a change order from the contractor. Um, that also required uh, some additional drawing redesign to be done by the electrical engineer. Um, so both of those were put together and we received uh, both a change order for the construction work and the design work. So in order to proceed with payment for those <laughs> additional scope items, the department is requesting that council proceed to approve payment to Allied Building in an amount not to exceed $8,988 and approve payment to De Clemente Siegel Design in the amount not to exceed $2,500 and then also authorize an additional expenditure not to exceed the combined total $11,488 from budgeted funds. Thank you. Directions from the council? Council President. Mr. McCullough. Be, everything's in order. Uh, very documented and appreciated you using the right process. So um, I'll often approving for consent if there are no objections. Okay. Any audience communication? 
And number three, I see none. We have an approving for consent. Item number four is an award of contract and request to authorize an expenditure from the Department of Public Works for the construction of the eight mile pressure reducing valve project in an amount not to exceed $522,275 from budgeted funds of the water and sewer fund. Mr. Rushlow. Yes, thank you. This project includes the installation of a new pressure reducing valve commonly referred to as a PRV. On Eight Mile Road, it would be just west of Ellen Drive. This um, new equipment would provide a redundant connection between two of our different pressure zones within the water supply system. You may recall we have four different pressure zones here in the city that supply water through the distribution mains to um, all of our customers. This connection would provide a greater system reliability in the event of a water main break or an equipment failure in other parts of the water system. The proposed project scope includes all labor materials and equipment necessary to install the PRV as well as other components that would go uh, along with that in the housing uh, that would be underground. So in order to proceed with construction, um, bid documents were prepared by the department with assistance from OHM advisors and bid documents were made publicly available on BidNet. We received two bids for this project. Um, it's our recommendation that council proceed to award cons a construction contract to Bidigary contractors uh, for this project to complete the eight mile PRV in an amount not to exceed 522,725. I'll note there was a typo in the um, letter that was submitted. Um, the, the number is uh, 522,725 and authorize an expenditure from budgeted funds in the water and sewer fund for this project. And I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any. Mr. Chair. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Russell, question. With this beyond Eight Mile Road, I was uh, unsure, does Farmington Hills or Oakland County share any of that burden through the water system or is that specifically just for Livonia? This, this one is specifically just Livonia. It'd be on the south side of Eight Mile Road and it only serves our water customers in the city of Livonia. Okay, well, Bidigary Construction, they do a great job and I know there's a lot of uh, past history with the city and them, and them being successful at the, the jobs that you've given them. So I'd like to offer an approving and consent if there's no objection from my colleagues. Anybody else from the council? I see none. Any audience communication? Uh, Ms. McIntyre? Uh, Mr. Rushlow, thank you for this package. So for, for the lay people, um, the pressure, the pressure redu reducing valve, I'm guessing this is a best practices? It is, so when we have uh, different pressure zones, they have higher pressure, lower pressure. And is that due to elevations? Uh, partially due to elevation, okay. um, as you know, and for the audience that, that's listening that may not know, um, there's about 100 feet of elevation change across the city from mm -hmm. 8 Mile and Haggerty down towards the Rouge River. Um, so in order to control that pressure as you go downhill, the water's flowing quicker through the pipes. We have these pressure reducing valves that help dampen that pressure and knock it back down to a reasonable pressure so it comes into your house and through the mains at a reasonable pressure that won't cause as many breaks or issues in your plumbing in your house, knocking pipes, things like that. Um, so a pressure reducing valve does just that. It helps control the pressure throughout the water system. But this is a second connection, right? There's already a connection. There is a, there. so currently on Eight Mile Road, what separates the two pressure zones mm -hmm. between where the cemetery is and Ellen Drive is because there is no physical connection between those two. Okay. Um, so if you, so the water flows down uh, Newburgh in Eight Mile, mm -hmm. comes down Newburgh, across Seven Mile, has to go back up Gill, which is now going uphill, right. and then gets into the neighborhoods uh, back in that area. So sometimes they actually have low pressure by extending the water main, which has already been installed on eight mile. We're now creating a new connection that's closer to the main feed from Great Lakes water at Newburgh. So they'll get water uh, more reliable, a better pressure. The pressure reducing valve is then needed to keep those two systems separate at, at a pressure zone. And then we'll be able to get water down a mile to those neighborhoods and thereby um, creating better reliability and better pressure for them. Thank you very much. So that was really very, very helpful in understanding what, where the redundancy was. So thank you, Jacob. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That. Quick question, if I may. Ms. Toy? On, on that note, if I may, um, you, you just spoke to the Great Lakes Water um, Authority. Um, and when you do that pressure, a lot, not a lot of times, but there have been times that the pressure is released from them and it blows out the pipes, et cetera. 
does this um, does this help control it, Mr. Rushflow, at all, or is it a separate system from what we're intercepting from them? No, that's a great question, um, Councilwoman Toy, and that is. Uh, one thing that we do control using the same type of valve, a pressure reducing valve. Okay. But those are located right in the meter pit where we get our connection and the water comes from Great Lakes system. Okay. So the GLWA system comes in. If there's a surge, our pressure reducing valve that's in that connection point in the meter pit will help dampen that surge, um, protect our pipes from a, from a increased pressure. Okay. I appreciate it because... Um, I remember when poor Westland had like 27 water main uh, hits in a given year and a half, and um, it was a real issue. Livonia, we never had those problems for, for whatever reason. I think <coughs> you guys kept a good eyeball on it. But there are other cities that probably shouldn't have picked on Westland, but it's, you know, true. And um, so I appreciate all you're doing on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Rushlow. Back in 2016, we had an issue where uh, one of the water supply facilities over by 8 Mile, I believe, lost pressure because we had a power outage of some sort um, that ultimately resulted us as a city, a good section of the city, not being able to consume the water for three or four days. I don't know. I think it might have predated you by a little bit of time. Um, with this pressure-reducing valve project, is this dependent on... Uh, electricity as well or how is this accomplished and is there for five hundred and twenty two some thousand dollars is there a redundancy that something like what did happen will not happen again so there a couple of questions in there I think I'll, sure. I'll try to get them both at the same time the pressure reducing valve first does not operate by any type of electronics it is um, something that responds by different pressures through the pipe in the way that that valve works internally. Uh, what we do have electronically on these systems are um, what's called um, system control and data analytics, or SCADA is the acronym for that. So these SCADA systems tell us upstream pressure, downstream pressure, um, is the valve open, closed, how's it working? So that part, electronics, helps us be able to operate the system efficiently. Um, to help with that issue that happened in 2016, 17, um, and in, I know there was one in 18 too, and like uh, Councilwoman Toy had said, the water main broke on um, Schoolcraft and Stark, and we had a similar type issue. We had to have a boil water. The SCADA system that we're actually working to implement right now will help us know what's going on in the system throughout and pinpoint where we may have lower pressures so we don't have citywide boil water um, concerns that yeah. only is really impacting one small area. So I know it's a little long way to but trying to answer both your questions at the same time because there is a, a subsequent project we're working on right now that will address <clears throat> your concern with the um, boil water issues. Okay. And, and yeah, I mean, I don't know that it's an ongoing concern, but it's something that having gone through it once, we can't help but think yeah. about it from time to time. Absolutely. So you referred to the, I think you said SCADA, is SCADA, that correct? Yep. It, are we going to see more of these items coming before us so that we have more data analytics in regards to all of these facilities and pressure? Um, resources? Yeah, absolutely. So one thing that council had done um, last year was we approved, uh, sorry, you guys had approved a uh, contract uh, um, addition with OHM to do a design project for SCADA. We're actually putting the finishing touches on there right now. That is going to be going out for bid here uh, very shortly. And that project um, will be kind of a design bid base uh, type delivery method and we'll be working with the contractor to um, improve and expand our SCADA system uh, across the entire water system. It'll be a, a phased approach, it'll be a couple of phases, and we'll come back and talk to you guys a little bit more when we have those bids back from uh, contractors. Okay, well, good news. Um, we have an approving on consent. Do we have any audience communication in regards to item number four? I see none. So item number four, approving on consent as indicated. Thank you, sir. Thank Welcome you. aboard. Welcome to Livonia. Or anytime we can steal any anybody from Dearborn is a is a good day. Um, it's worked out well in the past, I think. So um, we're going to go back to audience communication. Is there any audience communication from anybody who has not yet addressed the council this evening? I see none. Uh, any closing remarks from the council? I see none. Uh, it's been a pleasure, Livonia. Good night. <laughs>